right so with a humble beginning let us start let me by let me give you the different branches of history all right history as far as your examination kpsc upsc both will have ancient indian history the most neglected yet very significant medieval indian history modern indian history world history post independent history a very common topic to all these usually most of you not most of you i mean most of the candidates who are preparing for these examinations make a mistake of studying one particular topic isolated from all these things which is a big mistake which should not be done it is the art and culture the art and culture all right talking about upsc examination for your preliminary examination per se ancient medieval and modern indian history along with art and culture is a very significant area alwa all combined together expect at least 20 plus questions 20 questions at least and the minimum number is what i'm talking about ancient medieval art and culture and modern indian history will give you at least one fifth of your passing marks we have been studying history in our school the manner in which they teach the syllabus all right the important the points the topics which they considered as importance is quite you know it's for some other purpose it's not for your examination this examination the the uh the requirement of this examination is completely a different first of all you need to develop that what is relevant what is irrelevant and that that is that in itself is a big task to achieve how the one once you know that what is relevant what is irrelevant how the job is done world history yeah which would be studied from the perspective of the main examination these are the topics largely cater to the requirement of your main examination of course here and there i see questions in your preliminary examination as well all right so more or less conclude this that history is a very safe bet to play on all right since it is static in nature questions illinda thagon barabodu hosa hosa questions create madaboda eshtanta create martira any the content whatever the content already is existing i need to pick up questions from those so the previous year questions is giving me a lot of content a lot of understanding about the the commission whatever is conducting this examination and most of them are repeated i see i have seen i have seen this trend somewhere in 1980s they would have asked in 2019 2020 they would repeat it repeat and not in the exact manner but the area you can very easily demarcate what are the important areas what are the not important areas on the separate marko both we'll start with ancient indian history so ancient indian history will first work out the syllabus let us go through the syllabus what is the syllabus say in the nodana in the first section of our classes i mean in the first part of our classes we will be covering ancient medieval and art and culture most of the candidates most of the academies follow a very distinctive you know approach for these two ancient and medieval indian history and art and culture but little right do they know that these are quite relative in nature these are quite you know uh, arise the art and culture part of our indian history arises out of our you know the ancient practices which were you know at a different intervals which were practiced in ancient and medieval indian time so studying them in alliance is quite a necessity to understand things better i am not going to take you know art and indian architecture separately what am i going to do if there is a prominent piece of architectural system followed in some dynasty i will be teaching it right over there so that it makes sense alwa otherwise you will just be by harding things which is not our style artha aagta idya so let us go with the syllabus let me give you the syllabus of ancient indian history we'll be starting with the prehistory the prehistoric times or the prehistory please let us understand the syllabus first let us understand what is the requirement that the examination has 
prehistory what do you mean by prehistory something before history what does that mean prehistory simply refers to that time period which has no written evidences namma hatra note bitto hale document galu note bitto yeah this is the case and the short shot helak agalla we cannot surely ascertain that this has happened but because of other evidences we have derived certain conclusions of that time period can be divided into three paleolithic age mesolithic age and neolithic age understanding each and every technical term is as important as studying it studying the history what do you mean by paleo paleo means old lithic lithic what do you mean by lithic have you heard about something called as lithosphere what is lithosphere sixth standard geography which we have forgotten right outermost layer of the earth yes lithic here simply refers to stone the old stone age is what it comes down to because see in the earlier times did they have metals did people know about metals iron agirbodu copper agirbodu what are the tools that they used stone tools rocks stone tools alva so other koskara even in the stone age this lastly prehistory is what we call it as the stone age because stone was the basic tool that was probably used on a large scale old stone age middle stone age and the new stone age and roughly what is the time period 10000 bc whatever the primitive man or whatever the you know what whoever was existing it is something about them mesozoic 10000 to 6000 bc 6000 to 4000 bc paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic age will tell me will 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 tell us about the characteristic features of man over there and how see let me tell you how is it related to the art and culture aspect if we do not have anything written if we do not have any written substance how do we know about them how do we know about them because there were certain art and cultural parameters that were associated with the people living during these times that forms your art and culture study studying that differently distinctly makes no sense art and culture and the book hak bidirtare you know the famous books whichever is available in the market page 1 page 2 kutkombedo otta irtare without any connectivity you should know here that these people probably from the mesozoic from the mesolithic era onwards they practiced painting which is still remaining whatever they painted probably existed in their society yes they painted hunting scenes crude not like today's modern paintings but at least representative ones can i say that they were hunters and gatherers yeah that is how they and by the time they proceeded to the progress by the time and as the time progressed and they reached the neolithic age they started practicing pottery yes even now we make pottery alva but different forms but that was primitive pottery that will give me give me an understanding that they required pot what is the utility of pottery why do we use pottery storage that means they practice agriculture they grew something which needed storage how the work agriculture was practiced from the neolithic this is how we construct history especially the prehistory so art and culture is never separated needs not even uh, art and culture need not be separated from your ancient and medieval indian history and paintings are irbodu paintings of prehistory right in the edo mysore paintings irtave alli tanaka what time are they what is the utility art and culture is has some utility alva we just don't do it for time pass we just don't do it for entertainment there is a utility also understanding that element is quite essential artha aagta idya then after the prehistory we would be proceeding with something called as the calcolithic age is the age where we have discovered certain metals right copper alloys of copper bronze ivella to be very specific from 1800 bc 
2500 BC. I can fix this age. Alva, dates again not important. Don't remember these. It's just to give you a chronological understanding. All right. Then, as bronze develops, we call this as the bronze age. The significance of bronze age is that we find one of the oldest civilization belonging to India in this age, which is that the Indus Valley civilization or the Harappan civilization. I'm going to use this interchangeably. This bronze age is quite broader, right? Comes even in the Calcolithic age also. Just to demarcate this separately is what I've taken. Bronze age or the Indus Valley civilization is quite broad. I will tell you when we, when we de de deal with this, we'll talk about it. Followed by a phase of stability, which has brought to India in the Vedic age by the Aryans, the incoming of the Aryans, Vedic age in India, 1500 BC to 1000 BC largely, right? Followed by the Vedic age is the later Vedic period, 1000 BC to 600 BC, the later Vedic age. What is the difference? To give you a preliminary understanding, Vedic age, of course, brought about stability in agriculture, stability in the economic system, but also it brought spiritual stability. There were beliefs, right? Nature gods was the most important things. Indra, Agni, Varuna. Agni, it's a, it's a sacred thing, yes. So all these things. Right, was the philosophical, spiritual elements in these ages. As the later Vedic period, as the time progressed, there were certain changes in the society. There were certain changes in the society, in the class order. Emergence of, you know, the Chaturvar Nasra Mantare. Nalak Varane, what are the four Varnas? Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishras. Yeah, this created class distinctions. How the one? Aspirations of the people changed philosophies have come right so in the later vedic period certain developments have happened which lead to the emergence of new philosophies emergence of jainism and buddhism and on the political front this was philosophical front on the political front there were emerging emerging states in the form of the maha janapadas Maha Janapadas represents to a certain extent the political stability that was seen. The Maha Janapadas were a symbolic rise of the tribal states, different different states, ali, different different regions, ali, I'm, not, I'm sorry, different different regions, ali. Aure and Taun the rule Taun Manbito. They were started ruling states developed. What is a state? A state is that political entity that has a definite territory. Number one. That has a definite population. India, India population in their territory, India. Karnataka India. population and territory. That has a definite government. India. Does Karnataka have a government of its own? Does India have a government of its own? Yes or no? These are the three definite defining elements of a state. Any state will have these three elements: a population, a demographic setup, getting it, a government, and a specified territory. So that state will provide citizenship or what, what not. So different regions in India started developing their own individual states based on their tribal identities. Certain regions got powerful, certain regions got economically stable. They came to an extent that they could establish a government of their own. They have different regions right, in North India. Followed by, of all the regions, of all the states, would there be a conflict? The conflict is always a part of our society, always a part of any society for that matter. No conflict, no development. Conflict is an essential element, an indication that we are moving forward. If something new comes up, something dynamic happens, only then some people will have a problem. Some people will not have a problem. That should definitely be there. That's an indication. 
so the age of conflict will end by one particular empire one particular dynasty emerging powerful of all eshtu mahajana pada eshtu region idru adralli magadha anta one region irutte magad have you heard about something called as magad right the rulers of magad will emerge powerful because of certain advantages what they have got which will culminate into what we call it as the mauryan age the mauryan empire the first empire of india first indian empire right 322 to 187 bc attractivity of india as a destination increases india grows in terms of their wealth its wealth its prosperity its resources attracts foreigners attracts outsiders so there will be beginning of invasions the indo greeks i'll give you the detailing when we discuss them the shakas the kushanas the parthians etc enter into the indian subcontinent all right which we would call it which you would find in your textbook as the post mauryan age mauryan age after the mauryan age it would be the post mauryan age all right again there will be lot of disturbances in india lot of invasions and lot political uncertainties which will again take a little bit of time for one particular empire to emerge which we call it as the gupta age the gupta age followed by the post maurya age it would be the gupta age the gupta period anta karithevi right gupta period will have their developments in north india central india east india and what not of course gupta age would be somewhere around you know 550 ad fall forget about it followed by the gupta age it would be the post gupta period emergence of new dynasties again we're not going into all those dynasties in detail who were the kings right and what not but definitely we will talk about the economic development economic structure age to society hege develop aagta itto anta that is what we would be inquiring about all right and in all these whatever we have list we have never spoke about we have never seen something about south india south indian history remains to certain extent isolated so we will take a heading last we would take the developments of south indian history and then slowly and gradually we would be moving into the medieval indian dimension this is something associated with the ancient indian history all right very definite syllabus right very logical makes sense we will we will we will complete this set into an analytical and you know into an analytical frame so that you know remembering it won't be difficult yes or no so that it doesn't seem too dry and what not all right after this i'm not going to list the medieval indian syllabus today right whenever we start we would be discussing it and at the same time art and culture also every with every topic there will be art and cultural elements associated with this time periods completing those will complete the entire dimension right paintings for example paintings the different series of paintings that would be coming across studying right and then over there will make certain sense for example paintings in ajanta there will be question there so many questions on it. ajanta paintings have been developed somewhere in this era getting it so what is the theological element andre what 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 god or what is the uh, what is what was their idea as far as god is concerned anta then reflect agutte buddhism was the most prominent thing aa kaladalli so it is definitely we can conclude that ajanta paintings will have uh, images related to buddhism only that makes sense rather than by hating it ajanta dali urda you know ellora dali all the other thing what are what is the dynamics how it happened how it has been developing adana artha maadkonbitre you know questions are not just factual if you have seen the previous year questions please try to have some previous year questions or you know probably on your in your online they must have uploaded it check maadi all right we'll try to give you a copy if possible let's see right how it does works of previous year questions are your guide for your preparation not only this subject any subject if you are really serious about this examination if you really plan uh, you know to go ahead with this please please follow previous year questions because that is an ultimate source that is actual questions what the commission has asked how the long so you'll know what is the standard what is the level that you can expect 
second utility it will be repeated how the work and it's a test also for you to test where do you stand anta are you able to solve this as and when we proceed right if you are able to solve the particular questions then you are on the right track 